And joining us from the campaign trail in, in Indianapolis is Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, you received the endorsement of Indiana Governor Mike Pence on Friday. Jonah Goldberg in the National Review wrote that this is a moment of choosing for Republicans, that everybody who's a Republican should stand up and say they're either with Donald Trump or they're against Donald Trump. Do you agree with that? Well, I certainly agree that it is a moment of choosing, and I'll tell you, I was incredibly humbled and honored to receive Governor Pence's support. Uh, you know, I can tell you, Governor Pence, when he offered his support, made clear that, 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 that he was not voting against a candidate. He was affirmatively choosing to support our campaign. And, and, and I think the eyes of the entire country are on Indiana. Uh, and, and I am incredibly encouraged because it's, it's a basic choice. It is a choice, do you want to get behind a campaign that is based on yelling and screaming and cursing and insults? Or do you want to unify behind a campaign that has a positive, optimistic, forward-looking, conservative vision and real policy solutions to the problems facing this country, real solutions to bringing jobs back to America, to raising wages, to bringing manufacturing jobs back from Mexico, back from China, to expanding opportunity? And, and I think Governor Pence's support, we've seen those common sense conservative principles work here in Indiana. We've seen Governor Pence cutting taxes, reducing regulations, and private sector job growth. We need to bring that same Indiana common sense to the rest of the country. And I couldn't be more encouraged that it, it is the Midwestern good judgment and common sense of Hoosiers that will be deciding this next race, and, and I think really having a profound impact on, on, on the direction of this election nationally. Beyond that, though, in the larger question about the Republican Party, the conservative movement, uh, General Goldberg, David Brooks, and others have said this is a moment for all Republicans to stand up and say what they believe about the party, about its direction. Yes. With respect yes. to Donald Trump, you believe that it's incumbent upon them to do that? Well, I, I think it is a basic choice of, of what we believe. You know, one of the reasons this week that I announced Carly Fiorina as my vice presidential nominee is to provide a clear choice, a clear contrast to the voters. And I think there couldn't be a clearer choice between Carly and me on the one side, running on issues, running on substance, running on jobs and freedom and security and protecting the American people, versus Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton on the other side. And, and Donald and Hillary are, are really flip sides of the same coin. You know, Hillary has made millions of dollars selling power and influence in Washington. Donald has made billions buying politicians like Hillary Clinton. And I will say for Republicans, if we end up nominating, if we end up in the general election having two candidates on the ballot who are both big government, rich New York liberals, we will have profoundly failed this country. Both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton agree they think Planned Parenthood is wonderful. They both support taxpayer funding for it. I disagree with them on that. They both supported Bill Clinton's law banning many of the most popular firearms in America. I disagree with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton on that. Let me ask you then, Senator, yeah. if, if the choice is that clear and has been for some time, why are 10 million, why have 10 million people voted for Donald Trump? That's many millions more than you. He's got 300 or so more delegates. I mean, are, were those people confused about the choice? Did they miss something? Well, listen, early on, Donald did well when there were 17 candidates because he unified his support. He has, a, he has an impassioned minority behind him. And when everyone else was diffused, he won a lot of early states. Uh, and then he just had a good week winning New York and the adjoining states, so he did well close to home, and the media reacted with breathless excitement. What I can tell you is prior to New York, in the three weeks that preceded it, we saw five states in a row that voted, Utah, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Colorado, Wyoming, 1.3 million people voted in those five states, and we won landslides five elections in a row. And you know, you ask, are people confused? Listen, Donald Trump is attempting to perpetuate one of the greatest frauds in the history of, of modern elections, which is he is trying to convince people that he's some sort of outsider. Donald is the essence of the Washington insider. He has been enmeshed in the corruption in Washington. And you know, John, one of the things that illustrated that powerfully this week was when John Boehner went out of his way to attack me, to call me the devil. And then he praised two people. John Boehner praised Hillary Clinton, and he praised Donald Trump. He said Donald was his friend, was his golfing and texting buddy. If you think John Boehner is the kind of leader you want in the Republican Party, then Donald Trump is your candidate. If you think Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid are the kind of leaders you, you want, Donald Trump is your candidate because he's contributed heavily 
to John Boehner, to Harry Reid, to Nancy Pelosi, to Hillary Clinton. So the, and, and in fact, you know, I, I saw Boehner's comments. I kind of wondered if Boehner was auditioning to be Donald Trump's vice president. You know, a Trump-Boehner ticket would really say the Washington cartel in all its force. One has been funding the cartel. The other has been giving in to Democrats for years, which is why Boehner lost a speakership. We need instead someone fighting for the people and not for Washington. So, but your theory of how you'll get the nomination relies on you going to an open convention and overthrowing the delegates, uh, the, the, the delegate lead that Donald Trump has. In order for that to happen, you can't do that without the help of the Washington establishment that you've just been talking about. John, here's where we are. Nobody is going to get to 1237 before Cleveland. I'm not going to get there, but neither is Donald Trump. We're going to go to a contested convention. When we arrive in Cleveland, I'm going to have a bunch of delegates. Donald's going to have a bunch of delegates. And it's going to be a battle to see who can earn the support of a majority of the delegates elected by the people. You know, one of the reasons Donald has been so frantic trying to convince the media the election is over is because he knows he can't get a majority. He wants to change the rules so he doesn't need a majority. Listen, if a candidate can't earn a majority of the delegates, then they can't unite the party and they'd be a terrible and weak general election candidate. And Donald knows if he gets to that convention, he loses. Because what we're seeing is we're seeing the Republican Party really come together and unite behind our campaign. Of, of the 17 candidates who started this race, five have endorsed our campaign. Obviously, Carly Fiorina, but also Rick Perry and Lindsey Graham and Jeb Bush and Governor Scott though, Walker. Let me, That's the kind of unity we need. Let me ask you this, though, Senator. There's no question that you are the establishment's preferred candidate in that open uh, convention competition. You don't deny that, do you? Of course there's a question. John Boehner, the essence of the Washington establishment, he's not the only called fellow. me Lucifer in the flesh, and he said Donald Trump is his texting and golfing buddy. Listen, the, the Washington cartel, the lobbyists, Donald Trump's campaign is run by Washington lobbyists. His campaign manager is a 40-year Washington lobbyist. His, his lobbyist campaign manager went and told the heads of the RNC that Donald is just playing a role, that he doesn't believe any of this, that he's just saying what he thinks the voters want to hear, and he will be someone totally different. John, you've known me a little while now. I am the same person yesterday, today, and tomorrow as president. I'm going to do the exact same things I promised to do. We're going to repeal Obamacare, pass a flat tax, lift the burdens on small businesses, bring back jobs and economic growth, bring manufacturing jobs back to this country. Donald changes as the wind blows because the only thing Donald is interested in is Donald, whatever makes him rich. And we've seen the bipartisan corruption of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and John Boehner who sell out their principles. I think the American people want principled leaders who actually have a core set of beliefs. But if in Cleveland uh, your scenario were to go forward, the person who has millions more votes, that won't change. He will go to the convention, Donald Trump will, with millions more human being votes, real people, regular folks supporting him. And you are hoping to overthrow that with more delegates. In a situation okay. where delegates oh, oh. over people, what, won't that lead to riots? <laughs> Uh, no, it won't, although Donald m may do everything he can to encourage riots. You know, overthrow is such a loaded spin word as, as, as to, to, to bring nothing but chuckles. You know, I can tell you the last contested convention we had in 1976, Ronald Reagan had a million more votes than Gerald Ford, but Gerald Ford got the votes of a majority of the delegates. If you look back to the very first Republican convention in 1860, our very first candidate for president, Abraham Lincoln, came into a contested convention, and he was second in the balloting. And on the third ballot, he won a majority. The test is to win a majority. And Donald cannot win a majority. Majorities matter. And it's why Donald wants to change the rules and rig the system. You know, I'll, I'll use a football analogy. If you're on the 30-yard line, it's not a touchdown. Donald right now is on the 30-yard line, and he wants everyone to say, hey, the game is over because, you know, I'm past the 50. So what? He cannot earn a majority. And, and what we've got to do, you know, actually this week illustrated something powerful, John. If you contrast the people who are standing with me, Carly Fiorina, Indiana's Governor Mike Pence. On the other side, Donald Trump was proudly trumpeting the support of Mike Tyson, a convicted rapist who served three years in prison here in Indiana for rape. And Donald Trump says, well, Tyson is a tough guy. You know what, John? I don't think rapists are tough guys. I think rapists are weak 
They're bullies and they're cowards. And Donald may be really proud of his support from a convicted rapist. I'm proud of the support of Carly Fiorina and Governor Mike Pence and, and Republicans across this country are coming together saying, we don't need a bully. We don't need someone who yells and screams and insults. We need someone who understands how to bring jobs back to this country, how to defend the Constitution and Bill of Rights, and how to keep America safe from our enemies, especially radical Islamic terrorism. All right, Senator Cruz, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much. Thank you, John.